friends, welcome back to my channel. If you haven't been here before, welcome. My name is Danita and today I am going to show you what I do with my scrap pieces of custom fabric. If you're not familiar with my channel, um, I am going to link the video on custom fabric so you kind of understand what it is that I'm talking about. But custom fabric is pieces of art created by, by people um, just like you and me and they are amazing and they are beautiful and they are expensive. So I wanna make sure I get every little tiny piece of that fabric used in some way um, when my main project is done. So for instance, today I'm gonna to be working with this piece of fabric. I used it to make some ears for an ear swap a few months back and I just have been waiting to create something with these little pieces. So in order to do this project, you're going to need um, some of these fasteners from Swology. They don't have to be from Swology. I actually buy them in big bags on Amazon. Um, but in them are the tools that we're gonna need. That includes this uh, flexible button mold and the two pieces for making buttons. Today we are going to make two different things. We are going to make um, a button that can be used on the center of ears and then we're also going to be making a pop socket. That pop socket can also be used to make things like lanyard pulls, um, things like that. I bought my pop sockets in bulk. They're not really great ones, they're kind of cheap plastic ones, but I got 144 of them for like 10 bucks. So that's a lot of craft projects for me. And then you will also need Mod Podge, and then you can, we're not today, but you can also use um, this glaze coat to give it a resin finish. And I'll show you in the video the difference between just Mod Podge and the resin finish. You'll also need scissors, an applicator for the Mod Podge, and then I also like to have a popsicle stick. It helps with the Mod Podge. So let's get started and um, let's make some buttons. Okay, so the first thing that you're gonna do is take your button and just decide which image you want to be on this button. You're gonna to wanna to make sure there's plenty of room around the button in order to make um, the button work properly. Okay, so I think I'm gonna do my first one today with um, Carl and Ellie's faces as they just kinda of lay on the ground there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my scissors and cut a generous circle around that spot. So I do have a circle cutter, um, but I am going to use scissors just because of the camera view. It's gonna be a little bit easier for me. It does not need to be super neat. It just needs to be um, big enough because you're gonna stuff some of the fabric into the button. So you're gonna take your little piece like this and you're just gonna fold it over, kind of decide how you want that to fit and then you're going to press it down into the silicone mold. Once it's in there, you're gonna fold over the remaining fabric, kind of stretch it around, and you're gonna take this inside piece, and you're going to steadily be pushing the fabric in as you enter this into the mold. And then when you're done, you're just gonna pop it out of the mold. It just pops right out. And you're gonna have your, your completed button piece. Now, to protect the fabric, you're going to put a light layer of Mod Podge. And again, I just kinda use the popsicle stick to, to get it out and put it on and then you use my sponge. You can use a paintbrush or your fingers or whatever, and you're just going to evenly spread it so it's nice and light over the picture. And I usually will do two, um, two layers of this just to help protect the fabric. And I do this whether or not I am going to use the actual epoxy finish. So you can see there it is. It's got to dry for a little while. And then when it's done, um, with Mod Podge, it's gonna look like this. And if you do the epoxy finish, it's gonna look like this. 
And then for this project, because that one, the um, up one needs to dry, all you're gonna do is then glue it on. Now I use E6000 glue, but you can also use hot glue or um, just whatever your favorite properly sticking glue is. I'm a big fan of E6000 glue. I think it just works better. But you're just gonna kind of put this around the edges. And when you're making a lanyard pull, it's the exact same concept and it's gonna stick on pretty much the exact same way. Um, I am out of lanyard pulls at the moment, so I can't show you how those work, but there's actually probably quite a few things. You could put them on magnets um, for your fridge. You could put them on um, pin backings. I've done that before to make buttons to go on like a backpack or a, a jean jacket. And then you're just going to press it on there. And then let it dry. And when it's done, it's going to be just a simple pop socket. And again, these pop sockets are, are kind of inexpensive ones. Um, I'll be honest, I'm not gonna do the epoxy layer because it is a little bit complicated and because these pop sockets aren't necessarily long lasting, I don't usually do them on my pop sockets anymore. I just use the Mod Podge. Now, I also wanted to show you a really good use for these smaller ones. And this fabric I'm using today is perfect for this smaller size, but it's the same concept. You've got um, the little button piece, the little silicone mo um, mold, and then you have the backing for the button. And I'm gonna take my same piece of fabric and see it has all these little badges all over it. And so I'm gonna make one using one of the badges. Okay, so when you're making, um, when you're buying these at places like Hobby Lobby or um, Joann's or whatever, these are gonna come with these buttons on the back. For my next project, I don't wanna use them. So I'm gonna take a pair of these clippers that I have um, my husband uses them for his war gaming, and I'm just going to clip it off. You gotta put some muscle in there, clip it off on one side, and remove that piece. And then I'm going to choose a badge. I have chosen to do the two masks, which is one of the um, Wilderness Scout badges. And I'm going to take my button, which I think I just flew, went flying across the room. I'm gonna take my my button, I'm gonna center it onto the badge, and then I'm just going to press it down into the mold. I'm gonna trim some of this bigger fabric back, again, leaving plenty of fabric to fold in, but not so much that it um, won't close properly. And then I'm gonna just press the fabric down. Using the button back, I'm gonna press it in the rest of the way. I'm gonna pop it out of the mold. And see, I didn't completely get that centered, but I think it's gonna be okay. Then I'm going to take some Mod Podge, just a little dollop will do for such a small project and I'm going to put it on the fabric in order to protect it you don't want to you know let it get little strings and hairs on it that will kind of mess it up I quite often um, will use like tweezers to hold mine when I'm painting it but as you can see it's not necessary and then I'm going to choose one of my bows that I have ready and I am going to just glue it down on the top and then once it's done we have the perfect um, dimensional bow to go on a pair of up ears. So those are the 
those are some of the things I like to do with my scrap fabric. Um, I have a lot of little things I like to do, but I'd love to hear what you do with your scrap fabric to make sure that you're getting the most out of your custom fabric. So let me know down in the comments uh, if you've ever done these, if you have any questions about how they're done, and um, what you do with your scrap fabric. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Uh, I have more crafting videos coming up along with some box swaps and Disney hauls and all kinds of, of Disney fun. So until next time, have an absolutely fabulous day. Bye-bye.